he will talk us about a functional model for class of symmetric semi-bounded operators. Please. Thank you. Uh, do you see my presentation? Do you see my screen? Do you hear me? Yes, yes, everything is fine. I can see and hear you. You, you can go yet, please. <coughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to give a talk here. And I'll talk about uh, our joint work with Mikhail Bereshev about functional model uh, for some class of symmetric operators. This will be continuation of the work uh, that was subject of my talk the last year at this conference, uh, where I consider more general situation and uh, we are using some other methods to build, uh, again, a functional model. So um, the setting is becoming standard. We consider a symmetric operator L0 in a Hilbert space H, uh, which is uh, completely non self adjoint and positive definite. And for such operators, um, it is known uh, there is a Vichy uh, decomposition. Uh, the boundary of the adjoint operator can be decomposed in into a sum of three terms uh, involving uh, the kernel of this adjoint operator, K. Um, we suppose, um, as I said, that the operator is uh, positive definite, so uh, the deficiency indices are the same and they coincide with the dimension of this kernel. Uh, this allows to introduce the corresponding boundary triple for the symmetric operator. We, we, we call it Vishuk triple. It consists of a space and two boundary operators, gamma one and gamma, and gamma two, defined by these formulas uh, so that uh, the green identity holds. This determines the boundary triple. And using this triple, we define uh, a dynamical system with boundary control, which consists of a differential equation, wave equation, uh, zero initial conditions, and the boundary control uh, introduced in terms of the boundary operator gamma one. Here F is the control. It, uh, it is a function, K valued function, living in the space L2 of K valued functions. And we consider a class of smooth functions, MT, with compact support. For such smooth uh, controls, the solution of this uh, system is given explicitly by such a formula. It's classical, is and we call it a uh, smooth wave. Uh, smooth waves form a, a linear set. Its closure forms a uh, subspace in the Hilbert space H, where the operator L zero acts. Once again, we consider the space of controls FT, L2 on the finite interval. And once again, uh, we consider a system, a family of uh, such systems, alpha T, with the parameter T varying from zero to infinity and each on a finite interval. And thus we uh, consider a family or a chain of subspaces FT in L2 space on the half line. Uh, it should be mentioned that uh, this system has a property that it's not dependent on time. Uh, for this reason, we can differentiate the solution. Uh, the result is uh, the solution defined by the control when we take the derivative as a control. Uh, next, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Can I ask uh, what what does it mean? L not. L not. Yes, L not. Yeah. L zero. 
Yeah, L0. This is a symmetric operator. Symmetric operator. You can uh -huh. read about and, this. The, and then in the right. formula, sorry, uh, just to explain, pre preceding, preceding slide. Next. This in, pre what? in the this integral formula, L, this is ah. a joint extension. Yes, yes, and you're right. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. Here, yeah, this is Friedrich's extension. Uh, should be written on the, ah, Friedrich. the very first mm -hmm. slide. Uh, I, I've missed this. Sorry. Uh, L is a Friedrich extension. Mm -hmm. uh, positive definite operator uh, always has such an extension. <coughs> it is also positive definite. And we can use it to calculate. Uh, actually, we can reduce this system to an equation involving just this self-adjoint extension L and some additional term F appears. Yeah. So, so this so integral. L0, 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 um, L0, this is a positive definite operator and L is the definite Yeah. L0 is symmetric operator. Positive definite. L, positive positive definite. definite. L mm -hmm. is its Friedrich's extension, it's self-adjoint. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, next, um, uh, this system has some uh, control theory attributes, so to say, operators defined in these uh, spaces. FT is called outer space, space of controls, and H is inter inner space. The control operator WT is defined as an operator from FT to H, uh, and it uh, assigns um, it maps a control into a solution, uf at the time t. And um, I will make several um, assumptions about uh, different objects that appear in my talk. And in fact, all these assumptions will be made about uh, the initial operator L0, which determines all these things, the boundary triple, uh, the dynamical system and all the operators. So the first assumption is that these operators, WT, control operators, are all isomorphisms, isomorphisms between the space FT and their image. So they are bounded and they are invertible and the inverse is also bounded on the image. <coughs> so UT uh, denotes the linear set of uh, smooth waves, and it's an image of smooth controls under control operator. And the closure of this set is a subspace. It is called reachable subspace. It is known that um, the family of these subspaces exhausts the whole space H if under our assumptions, if L0 is completely non-self-adjoint operator. So we can consider this chain of subspaces, which will define the space where the, op the, the operator acts. Uh, the next object is connecting operator. It is given by this formula. It acts in the space of controls. It is isomorphism if the control operator is such. And uh, it is important in solving inverse problems because this operator usually can be reconstructed from the inverse problem data. If we are given the data, the inverse data, then usually we know uh, what these operators are for different values of t, the whole chain. <coughs> and uh, the tool that we use is triangular factorization of this operator CT um, with respect to the chain of subspaces F, Fs. This um, uh, triangular factorization is given by some operator construction, operator integral, um, which gives a so-called diagonal of this operator, not of exactly this operator, but of um, square root actually. 
and uh, factorization will appear later but the factor is used uh, to construct this functional model which is our aim and this model will be in some sense a solution of the inverse problem because it will resemble the operator that has been reconstructed uh, one important property of the system dynamical system alpha which we consider is that it, it doesn't depend on time this can be um, this reflects in uh, properties of control and uh, connecting operators in the following way independence of time means that we can shift the control take some control from the space of t and consider space of controls with larger time t, uh, t prime and take a shift operator which just moves the control to the right uh, independence of time means that uh, control operator acting on the original control acts the same as the control operator for bigger moment of time acting on a shifted control and this can be rewritten in using the operator of reflection y here uh, if we just take all this into account we'll get that uh, if you multiply from the right by this reflection operator uh, the result will be independent of time if we restrict such an operator for greater value of t to the smaller subspace we will get this, the operator with a smaller value of t uh, this forces us to, to introduce this modified um, control operator with head and this operator just is extending when we extend the subspace the subspace of t this enables to introduce the operator on uh, some dense linear linear set in the space of controls but it will be um, unbounded operator so we don't do this uh, now i i will um stop with this uh, general line and uh, recall our all the results from the previous year uh, which concerned the same situation but uh, a sub case when the defect deficiency indices were equal to one and uh, thus the controls were just scalar functions uh, in, in that case we assumed that uh, the connecting operator has the form of identity operator plus some integral thread column operator in these new notations with heads this means that uh, connecting operator have has this form and uh, the kernel of this integral operator is some function which doesn't depend on the time t it's the same for all moments of time continuation uh, this allowed us to find factorization of this C head in this form and V was just a Volterra integral operator <coughs> with some smooth kernel and then we uh, could take such an expression for the model operator mm, it is not obvious here why we should take this um, but, but this operator was <coughs> unitarily equivalent to the uh, to the original one and uh, substituting here uh, the form of uh, Walter integral equation we, we could get uh, the differential expression of Schrodinger type the result was that uh, the model operator is just the Schrodinger operator with some potential which is smooth and which is in the limit point case in infinity so the result was that we could uh, write out some uh, sufficient conditions 
for some abstract operator with deficiency index, indices one, uh, for it to be unitarily equivalent to this the symmetric Schrodinger operator. Now, let us return to the general case. We do not suppose that uh, connecting operator is integral, but we use the abstract form of um, triangular factorization. This is done using the tool of operator integral and diagonal. Here is the definition. Suppose uh, now W, which is not related now to that uh, control operator, is some bounded operator act acting from one Gilbert space to another. And suppose that Fs is a chain, parameterized chain of subspaces in F, which is a ordered, totally ordered set by inclusion. <coughs> It uh, generates another chain in the second space H, HS, where HS is the closure of the image of the initial subspace. Um, denote projections on FS by XS and on HS by PS. And then one can define the operator integral of this form as a limit of integral sums. It exists sometimes. <laughs> if it exists, then <coughs> we can further demand that um, its range is full. So to say, its range coincides when we close it. The closure of its range is coincides with the closure of the range of the operator W. Uh, then it's called regular, regular, and if additionally its kernel is trivial, then it's strongly regular. It is not uh, automatic. In meaningful examples, these operators exist and are regular and strongly regular, but one can construct examples of operators and chains for which uh, this diagonal doesn't exist. This operator is uh, an analog of uh, really upper diagonal part of a matrix. In the finite dimensional case, or oh, sorry, of, of diagonal part of the matrix in the finite dimensional case. In order to get our new result, we need the following assumptions. Here they are listed. Uh, we again consider that control operators are strongly regular and isomorphisms. Again, consider that they are isomorphisms and that they are strongly regular. Uh, also, we suppose this is a technical thing, but uh, we need to de demand that the subspaces HT, reachable subspaces, uh, are invariant for the operator L not star. This uh, means the following, that the domain is dense in this subspace and the operator doesn't uh, take the vectors out of this subspace. In such a case, we say that it has a part in this subspace. Uh, this more or less means that uh, we can take the closure of the smooth waves and what we get after this closure represents the whole of the operator. And uh, what we do is we consider this chain of extending subspaces in the space H, which fill up the whole space eventually and transform all of them one by one for each t into the space of controls. And after such transformation, the operator gets a simpler form, which, uh, which um, reminds the second derivative in time, plus some additional part. And then we show that under some assumption, this additional part is just a multiplication operator in this functional space, space of functions, L2. And so we get the functional model. <clears throat> Third uh, assumption is that the kernel of the joint operator K has a trivial intersection with uh, reachable subspaces. Uh, how do we use these um, assumptions? 
Angularity means that uh, the diagonal exists, and from this diagonal construction, we get some unitary operator psi t, which acts from the space h t into the space of control f t, and such that uh, if we multiply by it the control operator, we'll get the operator uh, v t, which is triangular. It acts in the space f t. It is triangular with respect to the chain. It means that each subspace of this chain is invariant for this operator. And thus, it provides a triangular factorization of the uh, connecting operator of this form. The same way as we did it in the case of uh, integral operator CT before a year ago. Uh, very important is that the property of the uh, control operator W survives the property of extension with time. Or it may be said that it's a property of independence of time of this operator. It is inherited by the factor and by the unitary operator that relates V and W. And that, that one property means that uh, there exists a unitary operator from the whole space H to the whole space F of controls such that it is ju just a restriction of this unitary operator. So we get some unitary operator and this unitary transform uh, transforms cell zero to its model. When do I have to finish? Um, Do I have much time left? Five minutes. Thanks. Uh, um, yes, and what do we do next? Uh, we use the following similarity to the minus second derivative of the uh, this this construction with a dynamical system and control operator makes it possible to represent the operator as some similarity transformation of the second derivative which is not very useful on its own but can be uh, used to construct a functional model uh, where does it come from uh, we use the following definition of the uh, control operator, the differential equation, and independence of time. That differentiating, uh, differentiating the solution is the same as differentiating the control. Then L0 star acts on some smooth wave, which is represented by action of the control operator on the control, W to F. As so here here it is written differently. This is the smooth wave. From the differential equation, it is the same as taking the second derivative, and the second derivative can be taken inside. <clears throat> it is the solution with control minus second derivative of f. And this is action of uh, the control operator on minus f. Uh, two primes. This means that uh, we can write that on the linear set of smooth smooth waves, uh, the operator L not star acts as W T after minus second derivative on some smooth linear, and the inverse of W T. If we uh, rewrite it using the operator w hat, it will be almost the same. This reflection will not change the second derivative. This is the relation that we will use. Uh, what we will do next, we'll take a triangular factorization of C. It is this and it is this. And uh, V is um, related to W by 
unitary operator psi. <clears throat> and we write the same as we had for w, we write the same for v. We will get some operator which we denote L not star hat will be the image, will be similarity transformation applied to minus second derivative in the same way as before with operator W, we do this with operator V. And since these operators are related by the unitary transform, we get this, the results are related by the unitary transform and we get the model. And why is, does, does this model have these properties? That is, it is functional model because it acts in the space of functions L2 on the half line, K valued functions. Uh, but in our examples, as we saw, if we consider, if we add the second derivative, as we saw in the example, the result of calculations when V was the Volterra operator and the inverse was again the Volterra op operator integral, uh, the second derivative cancelled after, after, after opening all the brackets. And the result was some bounded operator. So if we suppose that the result of this is bounded and densely defined, uh, then we get an, then we get a, an operator which is self-adjoint, symmetric operator uh, defi defined on a dense domain, uh, symmetric and bounded. And uh, also uh, for the chain Fs, it is triangular. If it is triangular, it means that it's diagonal. And uh, it is called, this property is called, uh, this operator is decomposable. If we consider uh, this, our space L2 as a von Neumann integral of Hilbert spaces with the layer K and the measure, Lebesgue measure on the interval from zero to T, uh, then decomposable means that Q acts as multiplication by some function. But in this case, multi uh, multi uh, the function should be K valued, uh, not uh, operator valued function of T. This follows from um, commutation with the projector, which follows from triangularity and self-adjointness. As a result, we get uh, the, the, the following fact. Qt is a multiplication operator multiplying by some function Q of t, which takes values in the space of bounded operators on K. <clears throat> and it's also bounded on each finite interval. Eventually, we come to the following. So here are the assumptions again. We added the fourth assumptions that this QT are bounded. And we get uh, the operator L hat zero, which has the form of Schrodinger operator with operator valued potential. And this operator valued potential is locally L infinity in the norm of this space. It acts on some domain. And this generalizes uh, the result for deficiency indexes, indices 1, 1, and doesn't use any particular form of the, in, any particular properties of integral operators or something like that. An abstract uh, condition for this. And uh, the final comment about this hymn is that it's related to the Aikonel operator. The Aikonel one operator. minute, one minute. You have okay. one minute, okay? Okay, okay. A canal is the operator, if we take um, the family of subspaces HT and the pro projectors onto these spaces PT, and consider this as a resolution of identity and uh, take an integral over this projection valued measure T, dp, we will get some self-adjoint operator. It is called a canal operator. And since, since uh, project, pr projections p uh, unitarily under this unitary transform 
transform into projections in the, in, uh, the space F onto subspaces Fs. Uh, the A canal under this transform becomes just multiplication by independent variable in L2. So Psi that we, get, that we got in the theorem is just a spectral transform for this A-canal operator. And the result is that uh, we have an operator L0, we have a chain of dynamical systems alpha, it determines the chain of subspaces, and it determines A-canal operator. And if this A-canal opera operator has some properties, then uh, it possesses such a spectral transformation that it makes it a multiplication operator in such space. It should be absolutely continuous operator and have multiplicity uniform uh, equal to the dimension of k. Then this transformation makes from the operator L0, L0 just a Schrodinger operator with operator valid potential. That's the meaning of this result. Thank you for your attention, that's all. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. I, I, I have to, to announce that I am taking the role of chairman just by technical reasons, some technical reasons in Victor's room, something like this. So, uh, so let's continue and uh, thank the speaker for the very good talk. And uh, are there questions, comments, please? Yes, uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. I have one question, Kabanihin. Uh, uh, which is, uh, uh, do you have the explicit form for this Q, operator Q on the uh, iconal? We can, uh, we can consider this form explicit, but since we do not know exactly what the operator V hat is, mm -hmm. it is explicit uh -huh. to this. So, what? We make this similarity transformation with a second derivative and then multiply and uh, subtract. subtract uh, mm -hmm. What, what do you mean explicit? Uh, what explicit? Uh, can, can you apply this um, result to the calculations, numerical experiments? Yeah. Or not? Not, not, rather not. <laughs> No, no, come about on. being explicit no. uh, in, in the one dimensional uh, defect case mm -hmm. when we suppose that um, connecting operator is integral operator uh, and V was Volterra integral operator then the calculation was very explicit but how to I don't know how to uh, maybe uh, I have one uh, suggestion you, you know that uh, a canal equation can be integrated uh, excusing characteristics. Mm -hmm. And so the, the uh, two linear steps, maybe it can help you to, to use the, these ideas. Uh, the A canal can be integrated. This kind of A canal, you, you see, there can be confusion in terminology, maybe. It's, uh, it's, we should reveal the nature of this A canal. It is related no. to the usual definition of Aikenal, but not very directly. Uh -huh. Not directly, but uh, that is exactly what I mean. Maybe not directly uh, hypothesis can help you to, or uh, how do you think? Is it possible to uh, use, uh, to get the, to obtain the expli explicit form of Q, operator Q, or it is, it's, Impossible in principle. I think it's a question of a class of operators. We can consider mm -hmm. different examples, and for some classes of operators, they be more or less explicit. I see. So mm -hmm. There is something to play with. Thank you. Very interesting because it, it can help. The econal is very important for uh, geophysics, for ultrasound tomography everywhere. So. It, I enjoyed your lecture and result. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. More questions and comments? Maybe I have uh, a com uh, 
very small, uh, very small remark. Very small remark. Uh, what is that? What is uh, what uh, is uh, this kind of activity? It is uh, interrelation, uh, interdisciplinary relations of inverse problems with functional analysis. We respect uh, this kind of interrelations and try at uh, ever try to um, to find them and to to exploit in inverse problems. And uh, the moral of this uh, of this activity is that to solve a very respectable wide class of inverse dynamical inverse problems is just to reduce some symmetric operator to some canonical form. Something like uh, that uh, any self-adjoint operator can be reduced to multiplication to independent variable, something like this. And uh, this, uh, acti act this kind of activity, this work clarifies the operator background of the boundary control method and similar methods uh, in uh, dynamical inverse problem. That is the principal, pr principal goal of this activity. And uh, little by little, Sergey clarifies the classes of operators, which, uh, may, which are covered by this philosophy, by this uh, approach. Uh, something, something like this. In my, uh, in, in my talks, I, I will also speak about something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if if there are there are no more comments and remarks, uh, we uh, announce uh, lunch up to two p.m.